Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Today in this video, we are going to take a look at something from Elecro. I buy a lot of components from them that are add-ons or modules for Raspberry Pi or other SPCs. They have very good touch screens, LCDs and all that stuff. And when I saw this, I said, I gotta have this. Basically, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the Crow Panel CM4 display. It's a compact display that comes with digital I.O., CAN, RS485, ADC, electrical device control, whatever. So there are a lot of ports, a seven inch screen, and you can power it with a CM4. So before all that, let me see if there's anything else in here. Okay, so it's IP65 front panel. So dust proof and waterproof. The electronic components also support high temperature operation, but how high, we don't know. I'm gonna check, but yeah, this is the board. So let's open it up together, see what we got. Okay, neatly packaged. There is a manual, so the ports are explained here, specification and installation guide. This is very nice. So here is the power connector. Okay, so this will be able to also power CM4 and the output is 12 volt, 2 amps. And I'll put that over here. There are some relay, I guess, connectors here. There is Wi-Fi antenna and the screen itself. Okay, so that's heavy. That's very nice. So neatly packaged and as you can see here, I IO on the bottom side so the power jack over here DC 12 volt up to 36 volt it accepts there are two USB A's and then there is the headphone jack HDMI port full size Ethernet gigabit and then there is a UART USB-C so you can connect the USB-C port and get UART so console basically RS-232 is over here if you have uh, electronic devices that work with RS-232 you want to control or communicate with them you can use this so in terms terms of uses so this is can and rs485 this is digital out digital and dodi this is the relay so you can turn on and off things with this right here is a small gpio so it's uh, four pins so it is from top to bottom ground IO 10, IO 22, and 3.3 volt. So there is a small GPIO over there. There is Wi Fi here, I guess. You connect that over here and then you tie it up. So let's remove this. Okay, that looks very, very nice. Oh, I was going through the whole thing. There was a label right there, right next to every port. That is beautiful. I didn't see it. Okay, so camera one, camera two port, obviously. GPS module is not installed, but I guess you can use the GPIO and install it. And make it stick out from here i guess lt i guess also if you install it it's not installed and here is the power light user light and action i guess button and light so here is the sim card slot oh sd card is already populated with a 64 gigabyte okay hold on i'm not gonna touch anything i'm gonna keep everything as is so on off switch is already on the off okay let's keep it there you know what i'm gonna take a look at it before turning it on Let's remove it very gently because there are cables. So there is one fan connector over here and one for antenna. And the 4G module goes over here. My problem is there is no heat sink on this. So the fan is right over it. Hopefully that is enough. So let me see if there is enough clearance. Yeah, I don't know. First, let's use it as is how they're shipping. If I see the numbers are slow, I can always install a heat sink. Another thing that that I got with this is this LoRaWAN gateway and as you can see there is a LoRaWAN port that you can install right there so with LoRaWAN as you know you can communicate with distances send and receive data here you go that's also from Elecro so LR1302 LoRaWAN gateway just I think there are like a lot of regulation and the bandwidth and all that stuff just make sure you get one for your country this is US 915 okay so if you're in Europe make sure you get the one that works for you and uh, installation is very complicated you just push that in that's it i guess the screws for this is not included can we borrow from something else let me see what i got let me put this back in like screw for nvme ssd work on this yep that worked let's connect the power cable again that's the orientation there you go all right so let's put this back 
Okay, so we have that ready. Now, what I'm gonna do is going to power it up, connect all the cables, and then take it for a spin. Give me a couple of minutes. A few minutes later. Okay, so I have everything wired up. Let's turn on and see what happens. Okay, immediately you get a logo. So I see that it is booting. Okay, welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Nothing on the HDMI. I'm capturing the HDMI port as well. All right, so Crow panel display and the information about it is right here okay so they have made a demo i have to show it like this because it's not showing up in the hdmi output so i can't capture and record this so imagine if you have electronic devices that you want to control with these ports right or you want to put it on the wall and can do like home automation stuff turn things on and off home assistant installed on this absolutely that's perfect for that as you can see are those clickable these are definitely not clickable i can't do anything with this this demo i think the demo is literally what it says a demo so what i'm going to do is i am going to actually try to boot into some raspberry pi that's not this and uh, see what we can do give me a couple of minutes i will be right back a few minutes later okay i figured it out the problem was that i connected hdmi and the mouse and keyboard so once you don't do that you will see that the touch screen and everything is snappy and working okay so yeah if you are using the demo version you will see that you can click on the normal state energy saving state and sleep state and now you can change it you can click on this plus icon parameter page you will see the screen it will explain the parameters of the computer and modules that are there and finally you can click on load Raspbian. I guess that's the OS. This is the operating system that we booted into. Yeah, I am going to connect mouse and keyboard to this and put it in there. And by the way, here is the power consumption when it is connected and everything powered on, even mouse and keyboard, that's nine watts. Okay, here let me show you like a couple of things. For instance, if we do NeoFetch, you'll see it comes with the Debian 11 and that's the resolution. So 1280 by 720, that's the screen resolution solution that's the basic raspberry pi cm4 oh by the way this is touch okay so yeah you can absolutely play around it it is touch screen and uh, if we do an iperf3 i just want to see the wi-fi speeds that's much much slower than i expected but yeah that's what you're gonna get it's not my wi-fi that's for sure and the other thing that i wanted to test was like these ports right like for instance the gpio and from their documentation let's actually take a look at it the gpio pin is 22 the one right before the bottom and the top one is ground so let me grab my multimeter and i'm going to plug these into end of my multimeter and what i'm going to do is use the top port for ground and most bottom one is going to be used for positive okay so what we are going to do is basically echo 22 to sys class gpio export okay and then echo out to sys class gpio gpio 22 direction and then echo one to sys class gpio gpio 22 value all right so you see this on the screen okay there you go so that's 3.3 volts and if we do it zero it goes back to zero so that one actually works perfectly one zero okay so this is gpio works and you can control devices like that in terms of other io the relay is two three pin relay switch for the low voltage levels okay and two four pin support two digital input and two digital output channels but any documentation is not here for those ports okay one of the things that is a little bit annoying is the fan noise okay so the fan is really loud let me actually quick type stress ng dash dash cpu and proc all right so i start it and let's see the power consumption goes up to 12 watts okay so 12 watts when you're using stress ng on all cores it's running 12.3 okay let's wait okay so we are getting 326 lots of things running in this that affects it but yeah that's what we are getting from the cm4 let me see what else i can do with this and let's see if i can show you guys anything else give me a couple of minutes all right i tried a bunch of other stuff i really couldn't get anything else to work like i tried kali image i wanted to show you guys that you might be able to like hold this and use it as a portable hacking device but didn't bother much with it i just tried a 
little bit, but it works. I mean, it loaded, just the touch screen wasn't working. So I'm sure it's something related to the drivers. Other than that, I also tried a little bit with the CAN bus. Didn't get much far, so I left that. But yeah, it seems like it is a solid device. As you can see, very responsive. Wi-Fi and everything we tested and showed. Also, you can install Home Assistant on this and uh, maybe mount it on the wall. Although I think it's a little bit overkill for a Home Assistant device. I mean, you can do it, obviously. The price is not that high, but there is a lot of other ports and GPIO that you can use it in your projects. So anyway, I just introduced you guys to this bad boy. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.